map making, one of the oldest forms of non-verbal communication. The earliest pointers to man's usage of maps can be traced back to more than 15,000 years ago to a small village called Lascaux in France. Archaeologists found evidence on the walls of caves where Cro-Magnon hunters first started communicating through pictures. They found scenes of hunters and their prey, pictures of their daily lives. They also found track lines and tallies that were thought to depict migration routes. A wall painting dating back to 6200 BC found in Katalhoyuk in Turkey could possibly be the earliest map. This scene depicted streets and houses in the town. It also detailed the town and its surrounding landmarks, such as a volcano that was close to the town. A clay tablet from the 25th century BC was found in Iraq and shows a map of a river valley between two hills. It also shows a plot of land that was owned by somebody called Azala. As the age progressed, the Greeks, being excellent seamen and explorers, began to bring news of new lands further and further afield. Though limited and often inaccurate, these gave rise to the first maps of lands and seas. The first map of the known world was drawn by Anaximander. Born in 610 BC, he is known as the first map maker. Anaximander believed that the earth was cylindrical and suspended in space. He proposed that people lived on the upper part of the disk. Anaximenes, one of his promising students, disagreed with him and proposed the earth to be a rectangular shape, an idea that we draw on even today in rectangular map neat lines, computer screens and document pages. Many subsequent notable Greek philosophers and mathematicians, such as Pythagoras, Aristotle and Eratosthenes, greatly advanced the science of ancient cartography. Pythagoras is credited with the introduction of a model that divides a spherical earth into five zones, one hot, two temperate, and two cold, northern and southern. Aristotle proved the earth's sphericity with scientific arguments, and Eratosthenes was the first to use meridians and parallels to divide the earth into sectors and reference places using grid points. In 140 AD, Ptolemy wrote his major work, Geographia, in eight volumes. This was the first atlas, complete with an index of place names, each with their latitude and longitudes. It even had a scale and conventional signs and legends, universal customs used till today. Ptolemy's maps were used by travelers for hundreds of years. It is believed that Christopher Columbus sailed with them when he discovered America in 1492. In the Persian and Arabic world, in 833 AD, Al-Khwarizmi's Khitab Surat al ard or book on the appearance of the earth, was completed as a revised and a completed version of Ptolemy's Geographia. It contained a list of coordinates of almost 2,500 cities. Al-Biruni wrote his book Cartography in 995 AD, a book that introduced triangulation as a technique to measure the earth and distances on it. He found that the radius of the earth was 6,339.6 kilometers, 
a value not obtained in the West until as recently as the 16th century. There is a long gap in our knowledge about the development of maps from the 2nd century AD until the medieval period. By this time, most world maps reflected the religious doctrines of 14th century Europe. The Church of Rome was the driving force behind map making and Jerusalem was the center of the known world. The Hereford Mappa Mundi, dating from 1300, is typical of this type of European map, showing Jerusalem at the center and the east to the top. In 1569, Gerardus Mercator of Belgium drew a world map on a cylindrical projection. This later became the standard map projection for representing the world. Most map makers, even today, still base world map projections on it. By the 17th and the 18th centuries, inventions such as the magnetic compass, telescope and sextant paved the way for further improvements and greater accuracy. Many new maps followed as great explorers and traders returned to fill in the blank spaces of the ever-expanding world. The biggest revolution in map making occurred in the 1970s with the development of the Geographic Information Systems, or GIS. A GIS captures, stores, analyzes, manages and presents data that is linked to location. These systems combine mapping software with remote sensing, land surveying, aerial photography, mathematics, photogrammetry and geography. And so it goes on. The sky is no longer the limit for map makers. Satellites orbit celestial bodies now and send data back to Earth. Data which can create detailed landform maps and images of planets and moons we are unlikely to ever see in such detail for real.